morning, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, my, name is, my name is Miriam, and I would like to pass on a warning. So, if you go to Saudi Arabia, just make sure you don't smell to strangers or people you don't know, especially for um, those who are not your spouse or partner or, you know, just they're not family members. Um, do you know why? It's because smiling causes our workers of pride. All these things. Yeah, so I think you've heard about these people. So there are they are uh, the Pegai or Indonesian workers of Um Of course, it's not because of smiling they get all these punishments or even violated in Saudi Arabia and other countries. I will get back to that later. Uh, but that's one of the factors, and I will explain to you later. So before we go to the factors why violations happen to our workers, I want to talk more about the workers. So as you can see in this table, um, until 2013, the workers abroad, especially the Pekai, have spent uh, around three million US dollars, and that's a lot of money. You know, us as teachers, I don't think we can make that in a year. So yeah, I think we should have more spent. And we send, uh, I guess like per year, it's around 4.3 million uh, workers being sent to these countries. And the cases that happen is around 22,000, 4,000. It's, it's a lot of people, a lot of cases that happen. Um, our workers abroad, those that have uh, contributed a lot in our society and our economy. But then why are they being Violated. Why they receive like poor treatment by their employers and by the people there? So it makes us think that are there any regulation or no one that protect them? Well, okay, there is something like that, and it goes to a point 108. It's very elaborate. It's very long. I think it's enough. We have 108 points. I mean, what else to cover? But well, the reality is this still happens. So. What's going on? Why is this happening? So, I'd like to talk to you about the factors. I think the first one is the weakness in the enforcement of the law. I mean, I'm not trying to uh, point a finger at the government and say, hey, you're not doing a good job. But I think they need to be more strict with how they implement their international law. Um, and the second thing, um, they need to also stop the legal workers in agency. It's a bit tricky. Uh, because you know how Indonesians, they're very smart at looking at opportunities and, and they're always opportunity seekers out there. So this requires us as Indonesians to sort of inform our government that you know, if we know someone who's, who are illegal workers or agencies, so we need to participate in joining um, the government to stop, stop having illegal workers and agencies abroad. And then, um, also, lack of facilities of, of for the workers abroad. Um, from my experience working in the United States and in Australia for a couple of years, working closely with uh, consulate there, what I saw was there there weren't many communities or facilities for these people for these workers, and a lot of them are dedicated to consulates for the diplomats, for the students, but not for the Tikai. And it's really sad because they really, as you can see, uh, they contributed a lot in our economy, but then why they don't get a lot of uh, attention from the government. So I think if they are facilitated enough, they are more welcome to sort of reach out to the government because they feel, okay, well, they take care of me, so I should, um, I can reach out to them, they feel more welcome, they feel that they're a part of an Indonesian family. And culture differences. So I think getting back to the smiling factor, um, I read in one of the uh, Islamic, VOA um, Islam, I know it's, it's a very Islamic uh, website. It says that in one of the article, it mentioned that um, Indonesian workers are very flirtatious and very inviting. And when I read that, I just thought, wow, this person is very misogynist. Like, does, she, does he hate women that much? But then after I read the whole article, I understood that he meant that you know there is this culture difference between Indonesia and Saudi Arabia that you cannot you know, just smile to 
go there because that's um, a different gesture. They would understand that as a different gesture. Like here, when we have Western men opening doors for Asian women, they will feel like, oh, you know, he, he likes me. But then it's actually, you know, it's just a polite way. It's for Indonesian, if you smile to people, it's just politeness and friendliness. But for them, it's not common. So we need to be careful with how we can treat people abroad. And then there's also a lack of respect that's happening in Indonesia among um, Indonesian people. Like, for example, when we treat our maid at home, we just call them like, nah, you know, like we don't really respect them much. We just, we, call, we could just call them and we don't really give them any respect. We just feel that because they're our maid, because they're from, our, from the lower social class, we can treat them in any way we want. And because we, they don't have um, any leverage to our life, we, can, we feel that there's no, um, there's nothing that we can gain from helping them. So because there's no, uh, we don't feel that there's something important um, helping with helping them. That's why we tend to dismiss the case. So what are the solutions? So I have three solutions that I can offer. The first one, well, we should have a trade embargo as a consequence of the violation of the law. So those people, those countries who want to have a trade with Indonesia, with Indonesia, they should abide the law that we set up for our workers, or else, well, then they just have to say bye-bye, no more trade with Indonesia. And then the second thing, we need to get to our workers with more working skills. So when they don't feel when they don't feel desperate about what can, what they can do in um, in their office, in their working environment. When they feel that, oh, I can do something more than just being a domestic helper, then they feel have they have more options, and they don't they won't feel that you know like, I can I can only do um, little things and they have more options and they're more they can choose. The third one is we need to give respect to our respect. So we need to respect these workers because they're a part of our Indonesian family. Think of them as our um, brothers and sisters. How would you feel if your brothers and sisters abroad being treated? Like with, with poor respect, with um, poor treatment, and they get violated. How would you feel if your your own family is being treated that way? So I think we should respect them more because they contribute a lot in our society and our economy. Therefore, we have to give them respect. So that's all that I have for today. And my name is Mary. Thank you for listening. workers there and also uh, the workers who are who already there? Uh, they need to be educated enough with you know, like culture, education, like you know when I guess it's, it's not uh, it's not important for people in Saudi Arabia to smile to their employers so just, just don't smile. 
so, so there, there is no yeah. education right I now think, for. I think a lot of people, even like in um, multinational companies, they're not aware of like giving their employee, uh, employees uh, culture education. Like if, if like Coca Cola doesn't give that kind of education to their workers, I bet these kind of you know like um, agency wouldn't even like think about that too. Yeah. Thank you.